This video is brought to you by the Wake Tech ILC and is closed captioned. Today, we'll be taking a look at some more complex punctuation in your sentences, like semicolons, colons, and dashes. First, let's take a look at semicolons. There are two main uses for a semicolon, to separate items in a list and to join two similar sentences. Let's talk about them in a list. Normally, when you create a list, you would separate the items with commas, like this. Last summer, I read Ulysses, Of Mice and Men, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. However, what if you wanted to describe each book? Here's how it would look with commas. Last summer, I read the long, complicated Ulysses, the brisk, short of Mice and Men, and 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was published after the film's release. The sentence looks messy, and it's confusing to tell where the items begin and end. That's when you could use a semicolon to separate out the items, like this. Last summer, I read The Long, Complicated Ulysses, The Brisk, Short of Mice and Men, and 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was published after the film's release. Here, the list is defined, and each item is clearly separated from the rest of the items on the list. Another way that you could use a semicolon is to join two very similar sentences. Now, you can't use a semicolon to connect any two sentences, as the two sentences must be clearly related in ways that warrant a semicolon connecting the ideas. Here's an example. I went to the store to buy some groceries. However, they were out of apples and tomatoes. You can join these two sentences together because they're somewhat related. First, I talk about going to the store to buy the groceries, and then I'm just explaining how the store visit went and that they were out of apples and tomatoes. Besides these two times, semicolons shouldn't be used. And on top of that, they should be used sparingly. While these are impressive to use when they are done correctly, it becomes tiring to read if every sentence is long and complicated. So make sure that you spread them a little evenly throughout the paper if you are going to use them. Next, let's take a look at colons. Besides time codes, colons only have one use. To announce, introduce, or direct attention to a list, definition, or quotation. In fact, the sentence that I just stated would look like this, written. Besides time codes, colons would only have one use, to announce, introduce, or direct attention to a list or definition or quotation. What's important to remember when using a colon is that the sentence or clause leading up to the colon has to be a complete thought, like in these examples. I went to the store for three things, carrots, apples, and oranges. My mother said the same thing to me every day. Always look both ways before crossing the road. There are numerous things to be afraid of in the dark. Spiders, monsters, and your brother trying to scare you from under the bed. When the thought is incomplete before the colon, you are not using the punctuation correctly, such as in this sentence. Chili is made with beans, ground beef, spices, and sometimes vegetables. In fact, when I was reading that sentence, you might have heard me pause a little bit between with and beans. That's what the colon creates, is that awkward pause. So to fix this sentence, you simply need to eliminate the colon and the sentence will be fixed. Chili is made with beans, ground beef, spices, and sometimes vegetables. Finally, let's talk about dashes. These are either used to attract attention or mark off parenthetical phrases. First, let's talk about how they can attract attention. To drag attention to something, someone may use a dash to separate one statement or clause that strongly exclaims a point as the dash attracts attention, like in this sentence. To read, study, and always make sure you are on top of your classes. These are the main goals of going to college. 
In the same way, two dashes may set off a phrase to command attention, like in this sentence. The form and style of film is drastically different from literature, as it exists on multiple tracks, with spoken and written words, performance, music, sound effects, and moving images, rather than on one track with just the written word. I'm dragging attention to how movies exist on multiple tracks and listing those tracks in the emphasis between the two dashes. However, this would start to fall under the second use of dashes, parenthetical phrases. If you watch the video on commas, we also talked about these kinds of phrases. However, dashes can allow the parenthetical phrase to become a bit more complicated. For example, this one with commas is a bit confusing. Charlie did his chores, walking the dog, preparing dinner, and vacuuming the floor every day after school. The parenthetical phrase is slightly confusing because the parenthetical phrase isn't just one short, simple phrase. So the dashes can help to clear that up. Charlie did his chores, walking the dog, preparing dinner, and vacuuming the floor every day after school. Having these dashes can help your reader understand exactly what the parenthetical phrase is, especially if it's long and complicated like the list of chores that Charlie is doing in this sentence. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on OrgSync and like us on Facebook. If you want to learn about more simple punctuation, be sure to check out our video on commas.